Hallo zusammen, heute haben wir Bruce McLeod zu Gast, CEO von Sabina Gold and Silver. Willkommen. Thank you for having me. Wenn Sie über Sabina berichten, dann erwähnen Sie mal den hohen Goldgehalt im unerschlossenen Tagebauprojekt. Ich vermute mal, unsere Zuschauer werden nicht ganz die Bedeutung des Ganzen direkt erfassen. Äh, deswegen ein paar Worte bitte dazu. Sure. Is, is these are the highest grade undeveloped open pits in the world of over half a million ounces. So they not only have scale and size, but also grade. Um, we are, are predominantly open pit, which means mining from surface rather than more expensive on a per ton basis on mining from underground. And uh, about 72% of our total reserves in our current feasibility are open pit and about 28% underground. Um, and that leads to a simpler, uh, uh, a faster payback uh, model. And, and grade is certainly uh, one of the most important things when you're looking at uh, any commodity is, is is the less tons that you have to move in order to produce an ounce of gold you know, generally means a better profit margins. Agnico Eagle betreibt in der Nähe, Nähe, in der Region, äh, das Meadowbank-Projekt mit, der, ich meine, drei Gramm äh, pro Tonne Erdreich und Sie haben sechs Gramm. Uh, Meadowbank in the last several years, and it's nearing the end of its mine life, has been uh, around at uh, uh, three to four grams per ton uh, uh, grade in their open pits. Uh, uh, we are looking at over 6.2 grams, so certainly uh, something that uh, that that is uh, is a is a very significant uh, project and and uh, will yield very strong cash flows. Erdkunde, lassen Sie uns darüber ein paar Worte verlieren. Äh, das Projekt befindet sich in Nanewet im Territorium Nanewet und ich denke nicht viele Deutsche oder Europäer haben schon mal davon gehört. 35.000 Einwohner auf einer Fläche von äh, annähernd 2 Millionen Quadratkilometern. Das ist mehr als Deutschland, Frankreich, Italien und Spanien zusammen haben. Und deswegen sprechen Sie auch äh, von, dem, ähm, von dem Projekt, wo sich das Ganze befindet, nicht gerade von, äh, Sie nennen das nicht äh, Project, sondern direkt Distrikt, weil es äh, einfach so riesig ist. 80 Kilometer Länge, das ist mehr als Berlin von äh, Nord nach Süd und von Ost nach West zusammen. Ähm, ja, aber diese, diese Lage, diese geografische Lage kommt natürlich mit Herausforderungen. Es ist, glaube ich, fair zu sagen, dass Sie, Sie sind noch keine Mine, aber schon ein Logistik- und ein Bauunternehmen. Ja, you know, largely it is logistics and construction. Is we are located in southwestern Nunavut. And uh, Nunavut is, is uh, Canada's newest uh, territory. It was uh, created by the... Um, uh, The, the settlement of all existing Aboriginal uh, land claims with the Inuit uh, uh, groups that uh, that uh, uh, inhabit uh, the land as ind Indigenous people. And that certainly comes with a lot uh, more surety of title when you know uh, that uh, those uh, uh, land claims have been uh, been settled. We operate in the area that is under the control of the, the Katikmiat uh, uh, Inuit Association. Our mineral rights are are, are grandfathered Canadian uh, uh, federal mineral rights, but the surface rights in and around our area are are largely controlled by the Tikkunot Inuit Association. So one of the things about advancing a project in, in terms of permitting um, is not only getting your federal permits, of which we now have not only all of ours for construction, but those for operating. But the other thing that is important is is getting your approval from the Kitikniot Inuit, and, uh, and that we have a uh, Inuit impact benefit agreement that's valid for 20 years and renewable um, that allows us uh, access to the land. And uh, and we've given uh, appropriate consideration to uh, the Kitikniot Inuit uh, in exchange for, for those rights. So, you know, we've spent over $300 million Canadian bringing the project to where it is today, and that is developing the resource, the reserve, uh, various technical studies. Um, but the big thing, as you mentioned before, is um, operating where we are in southwestern uh, Nunavut is there is no existing infrastructure. So everything that we need to operate this mine, we had to build or bring in. And the first was um, uh, overland access. Uh, uh, one thing about Nunavut is there are no roads from outside of the territory to inside of the territory. So everything that comes into Nunavut comes in uh, by, by sea or by air. Air is certainly very uh, cost inefficient when it comes uh, uh, to moving uh, bulk supplies. So what we've done is, is, is built our port facility in Bathurst Inlet 
And from there, we're about 172 kilometers um, to the, the, the uh, my site. And uh, what we've elected to do, which is very common in, in, in the north, is is use seasonal winter access. And, you know, when the lands freeze uh, in the winter is, is move everything over, over winter ice roads. Um, certainly uh, uh, more expensive on an annual basis, but much cheaper on a, on a pre-construction capital basis. And, you know, part of it is there is uncertainty as to whether these are viable. And it was very important for us to actually operate and build uh, that port and the, and the initial winter ice road to show that uh, our, our our studies were valid and that you can actually do it and operate it. Um, so, you know, those kind of de-risking activities, which some people really don't understand the significance of, are very important, particularly when it comes to um, obtaining debt uh, and, and the equity needed to, to actually construct and build and, and operate the Back River uh, Gold Belt. Es ist also anzunehmen, dass der gleiche Besitz, das gleiche Unternehmen, das gleiche Projekt nur weiter Süden in Kanada überhaupt nicht mehr auf dem Markt wäre. Well, well I think if it was in, in southern Canada, it would be a big hole in the ground. This would have been mined years ago. Um, and look, we are, we are uh, a development and operating company. Um, you know, if we look at our net asset value today, if we use anything even, you know, $1,600 gold, $1,600 US gold, um, we are trading at uh, 0.4 times net asset value. And what's happened in the in the mergers and acquisition space and in the gold space is, is people have in the past overpaid for assets at the top of the market. The, the producers are trying to be conservative in terms of what they're paying for for, for, for development assets. Um, we don't see a market that uh, is anywhere approaching what we would even consider a, a sale for. Our best option uh, for delivering value to our shareholders is to develop and operate to uh, the Back River uh, uh, Gold District to ourselves. And, you know, if, if valuations change, maybe we'll consider other options. But at this stage, um, it's not something that uh, we're looking at as a management or a board is, is, is a sale of the company. It's, it's move forward to develop it. Um, but be also very cognizant that, um, you know, uh, equity uh, dilution and debt dilution and, and, and risk of debt uh, is very real in this business, and particularly when it comes to cost overruns. So we are being um, admittedly very, very uh, uh, conservative in, in our plans to, uh, to move this forward. We want to make sure we do it under the right options um, and under the right terms. So, you know, we don't destroy shareholder value by uh, taking a, a misstep or a short step uh, in, in the initial uh, development. Es ist ein zyklisches Geschäft und nichts demonstriert das besser als eine Anekdote von ihrem Vater, von der ich gehört habe. Der befand sich am Ende seiner Karriere und ähm, hat gesehen, hey, da kommt ein Abschwung auf uns zu und ich habe keine Lust, hier nochmal zehn Jahre zu warten, bis es wieder aufwärts geht. Also hat er einfach aufgehört. Und äh, es ist, glaube ich, fair zu behaupten, dass wir uns momentan in einem Goldbullenmarkt befinden. Doch wie lange noch? Wie viel Zeit hat Sabina übrig, um seine Pläne zu realisieren, bevor der nächste Abschwung kommt? Well, we, we have one challenge, and that is seasonality, is our shipping window is uh, in the summer, uh, late summer uh, by sea. And obviously, because of COVID, we've missed the opportunity to, to uh, mobilize all the equipment and we need for construction. So that will not happen until the earliest of, of, a, of a year from now. Um, so what that is, uh, we're using that time to do is we're moving forward on plans to uh, update our feasibility study. Our feasibility study, which was done in, in uh, uh, 2015, used $1,150 U.S. gold. Um, today, we're uh, uh, at or near that uh, $2,000 U.S. mark. But if we look at it in Canadian dollar terms, um, uh, yeah, significantly higher considering where, where the Canadian dollar is trading in, in relationship to the U.S. dollar. So one of the things we're also moving forward on right now is We have made significant uh, new discoveries on the project with uh, the uh, uh, vault uh, upgrade to the, uh, to the uh, Umwelt deposit with the Llama Deep uh, discovery and with Nevoyak. So, you know, we've been focusing on spending as little money as we can to, make, to maximize the, uh, the envelopes or, or discovery potential. And now what we're doing is we're starting to infill drill those so we can actually use those in future economics. Um, you know, To, we won't be able to drill those off to a, a measured indicator or measured and indicated to able to use them in reserves by um, the first quarter of next year. But what we will do 
is take a look at some of the other measured and indicated uh, uh, resources, um, move those into uh, reserve classification, use uh, more current gold prices and costs, um, rescope the project. You know what we'll probably do is is also bring some of the higher grade uh, underground ounces more uh, forward uh, uh, earlier. And uh, um, again, I think this will has the potential to certainly uh, 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 improve the economics of what is already a very robust project. We're going to continue with modest expiration dollars. You know, the uh, the the uh, what is on uh, uh, the forefront of our strategy is is how to develop this project with the least risk um, to our uh, equity holders uh, going forward. Denken Sie der Markt belohnt Exploration gerade? Eine Million für Bohrungen. Ergibt das mehr als eine Million in der Marktbewertung? Wie ist die Situation gerade? Well, even in a poor market, we've had, uh, uh, when we announced the Nohoyak discovery, um, you know, our market cap was certainly less than it is today. You know, a single drill hole added $50 million dollars to the market capitalization of the company uh, with Nohoyak. And, you know, that was a, a, a four or $500,000 drill hole. So, You know, even in a market that certainly isn't uh, where we are today, we've been able to show that uh, expiration has added uh, uh, to uh, the equity value and has been a creep for our shareholders. Now, that being said is, you know, we have to move this project forward and get it to the point that uh, we can uh, commence development. So that is the number one uh, 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 item on our, on our strategy, but continuing to show where we can unlock additional value. We have another uh, two million ounces that's outside of our, our reserves uh, at the Goose, or sorry, the George property, which is over 50 kilometers away. And within this, as you mentioned, 80 kilometer long belt, um, we haven't spent any time or uh, money on drilling those targets. And arguably, we have more targets there than what are within, you know, uh, uh, close radius of the proposed plant. But what we are doing this year is, is actually doing some modern uh, geophysics um, trying to tie those in uh, together and trying to develop a, a better uh, uh, um, clarity on some of those expiration targets. So when we do turn our attention to drilling those, that we have a better chance of making additional discoveries uh, outside of the known reserves within this uh, within this district and belt. Wie sieht es aus mit den Schiffstransporten dieses Jahr? Gar keine oder nur weniger? If we if we do a sea lift, it'll be uh, one that we're piggybacking on some others um, to bring in some of the equipment that we purchased. And uh, but it, it it won't be strategic. It won't be anything that uh, will allow us to to start uh, with construction uh, next year. Uh, it's really just bringing some of that equipment that we have down in the, in the uh, 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 in the south uh, to site uh, that will uh, help us with some of the uh, the pre construction activities if and when. We make that production decision, which, you know, we feel the timing is, uh, is, is very close. Corona hat es also etwas schwieriger für Sie gemacht, die Risiken des Projekts zu minimieren. Ähm, Infrastruktur, Logistik, Bau, das ist jetzt alles ein bisschen teurer geworden. Gilt das auch für die EPCs, die Festpreisangebote, die Sie geplant haben im letzten Jahr? Ähm, ist das durch oder ähm, ist das jetzt nach hinten verschoben, weil die Bauunternehmen mehr Geld verlangen? It's not that they want more money. It is that they see increased risk and they're uncertain of what their cost inputs will be. So with that being said is what they see is more risk uh, operating under COVID. You know, global supply chains are, are there's uncertainty on delivery of, 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 of equipment and supplies. So if you want to lump some bid today, you're going to have to absorb some of those costs. Um, what we have decided to do is move forward on separating the EPC, so separating the engineering from the procurement and construction. And one thing that we can do uh, under COVID is, is go ahead with the detailed engineering, which is the basis for any um, uh, uh, procurement and construction plans. So if we can complete that uh, detailed engineering by early next year, what it does is allows us to go forward with the P and the C, the procurement and the construction bids. And I think once the detailed engineering is, is complete or near complete, then what that'll do is, is tighten up the, uh, uh, the, the bids or lump sum bidding of the, uh, of the components that we don't have the expertise to build ourselves. So, you know, the plants, uh, truck shop, powerhouses, um, those sort of things, the civil works were miners and that's what we do. Um, so what that will do is uh, we're still moving forward, but we're only move, advancing one of those components being the engineering side. 
And, and again, what that will do is, is deliver less risk when we do go forward with the, uh, with the procurement and construction uh, of bidding. Gehen wir ein paar Jahre zurück in der Betrachtung. Sabina war schon mal ein Milliardenunternehmen und in der Zeit, als Sie sich angeschlossen haben, ist das Ganze auf 50 Millionen zurückgegangen. It was, yeah, it was sub 50 million and we had 30 million dollars in the bank. So when I joined the company, the company really had a 20 million dollar enterprise value. And I think, you know, what, what happened was, um, you know, Sabina had, had done some real quality work, but what, what they were looking at is it was in a merger and acquisition market where, you know, I think the strategy was is, is at a billion dollars uh, and, and, and people being very active in the M&A space is maybe we should sell this project. Uh, but what they did is they designed the feasibility around a project that likely, in my opinion, nobody would ever build. It was too large. There was too many moving parts. And what we've done as a management team and a board is, is had another look at that. Um, found, is there ways that we can actually put less risk in, but maintain most of that goal production? And that's what we call this initial project uh, feasibility, which was rather than trying to mine from, you know, simultaneously up to five separate deposits up to 50 kilometers away, was trying to mine, uh, you know, uh, two to three deposits maximum within about a three kilometer uh, radius of the proposed plant. That's still the plan, but I think that um, what uh, we're looking at now is the difference of being, you know, having a, a $50 million market cap and then and six or 700 million is we can actually look at it through a slightly different lens and say, look, then it was, it was minimizing capital was our number one concern because that capital was, you know, 10 times our market cap. Today, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's only a portion of our market capitalization. So are there some higher value areas that we can bring in earlier, i.e. the underground at, uh, at vault, and that'll actually improve the internal rate of return and the net asset value of the project? So what we're looking at, if we recast the feasibility, it certainly won't be just plugging in today's uh, gold prices and, and costs. Um, but also, is there something that we can do better um, based on our ability to, uh, to to spend more in, as you said, a, a, a rising and, 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 and full gold market? So, uh, you know, I think that, uh, you know, we've got some internal studies that we're, we're very happy with the results of. And we think that we can show uh, a, the potential to uh, increase the value of this asset. But... It doesn't stop any of our development plans because one of the things we've stopped and checked is, you know, are we still building the correct plant size? Are we still building the right infrastructure? And we've answered yes on all of those. The one thing that we we will do is make sure that we have some expansion potential within this uh, uh, project um, because um, all of the deposits are open at depth. Um, our global resource on measured indicated is 5.2 million ounces, another 2 million ounces at uh, inferred. So a total of 7.2 million ounces in all categories with the additional discoveries and the potential. Um, I think that could be a, a number much, much larger um, in the years to come. Ich fand es interessant zu erfahren, ähm, als das alte Management an Sie herangetreten ist, äh, da haben Sie direkt abgewunken am ersten äh, Mal oder beim ersten Anschauen. Aber dann haben sie sich das doch ganz genau angeschaut und jetzt sind sie hier. I, I, I wouldn't say it looks bad. Is my due diligence was three keystrokes on my computer. I looked at the chart. And uh, again, as you said before, this company had a billion dollar market cap. And, and when I was approached, it was a 50 million dollar market cap. And, you know, and it had money in the bank. The capital structure wasn't affected. There had been no material bad news. Um, and I thought there must be something wrong. Um, and I, I've got history with several of the board members and we've had some, some very successful ventures, uh, uh with others with, within this board. And, you know, there's also some very smart people. So, you know, what I said is, okay, look, I I'll look, and if there's something wrong, I'll let them know. So I didn't let the existing uh, management know I was looking and, and they get granted me access to the data. And, and what I found was that it, it truly had just been scoped wrong and, um, you know, there wasn't a clear and concise strategy for moving the project forward and taking into account what can we afford. And, you know, the first thing was trying to reduce capital um, without being silly. And I, I'll, I'll be the first to agree. We took some shortcuts um, on some things that uh, we knew we'd have to spend more money in sustaining capital. But really, it's that initial capital that was the, the scariest part. And, um, and, you know, we've had a 
we'll call it a sober second look at the capital. And I think we've provided some guidance that our capital will go up modestly. It'll, it'll be in that uh, 10 to 20% increase over our last feasibility. But if we look at Canadian dollar terms, uh, we're we're over 80% higher gold price uh, than we were in that last uh, technical report. So, you know, if we look at it uh, with all things considered, it's still a better project. And with some of the work that we've done, particularly on the de-risking logistics and infrastructure and through engineering and 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 uh, other work, it's it's a far better project with far less risk. And and people still look at Sabina and say, you know, look, it's in the middle of nowhere. It is, but that's why we've spent all the money showing that we can actually operate our logistics and supply chain from our, our consolidation points in southern Canada by land and by sea directly to the site. We've done that. I don't think I think there's very few management teams that, that, that have that kind of ability. A lot of us uh, within the the, the 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 team have spent a lot of our uh, years in, in this uh, profession working in in remote uh, areas and remote sites. Um, the second is uh, a thing that people look at is you know what's the real capital cost and you know one of the things that we have done is through some of that work is you know build an airport facility. That was within the, the square brackets of, of what was estimated in our feasibility. Um, you know, the Winter Ice Road, again, um, you know, considering it was a, uh, the first time we've done it, uh, it, it cost slightly more uh, than our feasibility stated. But, you know, we built it from one end versus building, having the equipment to be able to build it from both ends as we envision going forward. So, you know, we've been able to show that our numbers are valid. But with that being said, We've also looked at it and looked at it from a risk basis. You know, there's another project to the north of us that has certainly got some significant operating challenges. A lot of that is due to some, you know, mistakes that were made in, in, in how they constructed the site. And what we've done is use that opportunity to say, look, is uh, on a risk adjusted basis, are we are we doing this right? We came to the conclusion that largely we were, but there were some areas that we were probably taking too much risk. And um, uh, so we've modified our, our operational plans and, and added some additional capital where we think that is going to, to, to save us uh, uh, potential problems going forward. Ich erwähnte zuvor die Marktkapitalisierung, äh, dass diese von einer Milliarde auf 50 Millionen runtergefallen ist, äh, weil ich erfahren wollte, was muss schieflaufen, was könnte schieflaufen, falsch laufen, damit sich dieses Szenario wiederholt, dass wir in zehn Jahren von jetzt gesehen, wieder auf eine Brachfläche schauen, das Projekt überhaupt nicht weitergekommen ist. Corona 2.0. Uh, look, this is the mining business. I, I, I don't think we have enough time to say what could go wrong. Is, uh, is, is, you know, the biggest thing is, is we're a price taker. And uh, we have no ability to set market prices. And, uh, you know, gold prices is, is the ultimate uh, uh, numerator in terms of, uh, you know, where does our revenue come from at what price? Um, you know, we've largely de-risked a lot of those uh, mining risks that other that exist in other jurisdictions. You know, we're in Canada, we're fully permitted, we have social license, we have long-term annual impact benefit agreements. Um, look, one of the things that uh, is a big benefit to us compared to where our feasibility is, is fuel prices is as much as we would love to have uh, solar or wind um, uh, uh, or, or other alternative energy is those um, come at too great a cost where we are, and you still need diesel for base load. So fuel input cost is, is a big risk. You know, one of the other things is uh, that uh, is certainly a problem in the mining industry is the ability uh, to, to hire and, and, uh, and uh, maintain a staff of, of qualified people. Um, we're somewhat lucky, particularly in the construction side right now, not for as a Canadian, we're unlucky, but for the mining sector and, and, and Sabina, we're lucky that the energy sector, um, uh, particularly heavy oil, um, has had so little construction that a lot of those qualified personnel, welders, pipe fitters, electricians, mechanics um, are available. Um, so, you know, labor market constraints certainly are, are a big risk. Um, uh, you know, th there's just there's a lot of things in this business that can go wrong. And generally, uh, the way to mitigate many of those risks is, is, is take the time to make sure you're doing it right the first time. And I think that uh, we've certainly done that. You know, I, I can't envision unless the gold market is over before it started that, uh, you know, that is going to be the issue for us. Um, I, I, I can't see this project uh, uh, not being in production in the, in the next uh, uh, five years. 
Ein paar Fragen, die jeder Investor in Junior Mining Unternehmen stellen sollte. Besitzt das Unternehmen, äh, besitzt das Management Anteile am Unternehmen? Besitzen Sie Anteile am Unternehmen? Absolutely. As um, when I started this, you know, I didn't have any founder stock. I didn't have any cheap nickel stock. So everything I've had to buy out of the market at market prices. Um, and uh, I'm uh, two million shares that I've bought since I've been with the company. Uh, additional uh, 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 consideration for options that have been granted for me as, as CEO of the company. Uh, I think all of our board members uh, and uh, and management team have equity ownership. And if we look at uh, on balance, the, that equity ownership has gone up, gone up in the, in the last five years. So certainly, I, I think that uh, we have uh, put our money where it must go. Ich mag den englischen Begriff Skin in the Game. Und ich habe Sie richtig verstanden. Sie haben Aktien an der Börse gekauft, wie jeder andere auch. Yep, I think again, I, I there was no founder shares. Uh, you know, I didn't found this company, uh, uh, so I had everybody uh, out uh, there has had the opportunity to buy at the same prices that uh, that I have, and I've participated in virtually all of our financings uh, since I've joined the company. Too. Im Rohstoffsektor gibt's den Begriff Know Who als Ergänzung zu Know How. Um, Sie haben 30 Jahre Erfahrung in dem Sektor, in der dritten Generation, uh, nachweisbare Leistung. Um, gilt das auch für die anderen Teammitglieder? Um, you know, again, we've got a seasoned team. Uh, you know, our CFO started the business as a, as a, as a, in working uh, at mine sites and in in, uh, in in warehouse and and educated uh, herself and uh, uh, certainly knows her way around a mine very well. Which you know, uh, in Vancouver, there's many CFOs that have never spent any time at operations. Um, uh, you know, uh, permitting. Uh, exploration, um, uh, all of the, uh, the the key point project development, construction. Um, uh, again, a very good experience and a, and a good track record. And and look, our all of our resumes have got some bumps and bruises along the way. We've been uh, in this business a long time. I don't I don't think that uh, anybody that I know that's been successful hasn't you know had some some setbacks in this business. But to be uh, honest, is is I think you learn more certainly from some of those. Uh, rough rides than you do the ones that uh, go straight to the top. So um, I think we're, we're, we're certainly a seasoned team. Um, uh, where we are, um, I think you have to have a certain level of conservatism, but you also have to be uh, able to, to see the opportunities. And I think we've done a good job of taking some opportunities that uh, have existed there and, and develop them. And as as uh, Norton Keeble opens uh, his book, um, is, uh, is, is mines are certainly made, they're not found. And if we look at, you know, how this project has gone through the evolution, um, as the resources increased, um, and, uh, look at de-risking everything from metallurgy to environmental concerns, uh, to operational logistic concerns. Um, I think that, uh, you know, I've got a team that I can stand up and, and be very proud of on, on, on what they've been able to deliver, uh, uh, in the last five years. Eine Frage zu den Hauptaktionären. Es gibt äh, Sun Valley, Dundee, Wheaton, ähm, aber die meisten Fragen äh, fallen zu den Chinesen. Weshalb das Interesse an den Chinesen? Shao Jin, befürchtet man eine Sperrminorität? They do not have a blocking majority. They actually own 9.9%. They actually have uh, in our agreement that uh, if there is a transaction that the board votes in favor of, uh, they have to either vote in favor of or provide a superior proposal. So it's certainly not a blocking uh, 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 interest. And, you know, Zhao Jin is, is not a, a major by world standards. Uh, they're a, they're a mid-tier. Um, they have no experience in operating uh, uh, mines outside of China. Uh, certainly operating in the far north is something that they do not have the expertise of. But, you know, part of their uh, opportunity and what they looked at is, is You know, what can they learn from a project like this? They have a project that's very similar from a, uh, a, a, a geological perspective that they're developing. Um, but certainly from operating in Canada and the north, uh, they're, they're, they're not seasoned. And uh, what they're looking for is the opportunity that they can learn uh, uh, and grow with us. Also, haben Sie gar keine Ahnung, weshalb man nach den Chinesen fragt? You know, I, I think that uh, uh, certainly with Canadian uh, 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 Chinese relations, that uh, people are worried about those things. And, and look, I think, uh, you know, we've, uh, I think, done a very good job of maintaining a solid relationship between ourselves and Zhao Jin. 
you know, what I, uh, I, I don't think anybody can refute is, is they put in $66 million in a market that nobody else was willing to put in that kind of dollars for. And if it wasn't for them, this project wouldn't be shovel ready and permitted uh, uh, and, uh, and the logistics uh, behind it. So, you know, they provided significant benefits to all the Sabina shareholders with their uh, not only initial equity contribution, which made, they made a significant premium, but their subsequent uh, equity contributions that they've made uh, alongside uh, other shareholders. Stichwort Shovel Ready, Schaufel bereit, Schaufel fertig. Ähm, meines Erachtens gibt es nicht viele Projekte ihrer Art. Es gibt äh, in Kolumbien und Ecuador äh, welche, die aber bald in der Produktion sein werden. Ähm, haben Sie dann den besten, Pre äh, die, den besten Platz in Ihrer Kategorie inne? You know, there's very few development projects, and if we look at the timeline of, of from a feasibility to permitted, is is for us it was five years and, and uh, you know closer to 40 than 30 million dollars to uh, to permit the project to shovel ready. And the reality is, is a lot of these exploration plays that are just starting to make discoveries that don't have a resource or a reserve. There's no way they're going to be able to uh, have these uh, projects up and ready uh, in this gold cycle. Um, so, uh, you know, what's happened is I think the developers have lagged. Um, there's various reports from, from many of the analysts that cover the space. And I think that, you know, what has happened is if we look at the producer uh, 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 environment, the mid-tiers and majors, there's very few prod or companies that have, you know, that can maintain their gold production five and 10 years out. Um, so a project like ours, I think we're going to have uh, a far be far more attractive to the industry because we are a company that is going to be able to internally uh, provide growth. Um, if we look at once we get back river uh, and the goose project up and running, you know, our subsequent growth is going to become from a district that we already own instead of a merger and acquisition team or corporate development team is, is I think what we need to be successful is, is, is more good geologists and, and, and more drills. Because that potential to keep adding to the resource, not only within Goose, where everything's still open, um, and we've got a thesis that these deposits will all connect. Um, and we've done, a, 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 I think, a tremendous job in, in advancing that thesis and, and showing that every time that we've gone to uh, uh, test one of these uh, down plunge extensions, it, it, it is there. Um, we might hit, not hit it on the first hole every time, but... Um, Uh, you know, within this district, I think there's there's going to be far more uh, good uh, uh, surprises coming out of it uh, in the future. Das beste Szenario, wenn wir mal die Finanzierung steht. Was denken Sie? Dieses Jahr ist eigentlich schon vorbei. I, I think what we're what we're uh, gearing for is is spring of next year for project finance. Um, in time that we can mobilize. Um, Uh, uh, the equipment and supplies that we need for a summer sea lift in 2021 um, and begin the, the process of, of, of building a, a world-class asset. Ja, und wann kann man mit der ersten Unze rechnen? 2024? Well, it'll be, uh, it'll be Q4 23, uh, Q1 24. Und werden wir dann immer noch einen Goldbullenmarkt haben? Uh, look, to me, uh, having a project that uh, that makes economic sense at 11.50 gold with an $80 uh, US uh, per barrel, um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm tickled pink with uh, today's gold price. Um, you know, even with, with today gold being down uh, $85 or $90. Dollars, you know, one of the things that I think is here to stay is uh, for the, uh, the the medium term and certainly more than a year or two is is. You know, we've got so many uh, first world nations that have uh, had to print money in order to uh, uh, maintain liquidity. Um, you know, the one thing you can't do is print gold. And people are looking at gold as an asset class to protect that uh, uh, deflationary uh, value of, 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 of their uh, native currencies. And, and particularly in countries outside of the U.S. and, uh, and, and Germany, uh, where we've seen uh, a significant uh, 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 inflation um, uh, due to uh, uh, issues in the economy. And, and certainly, um, I think that the repercussions economically of what's happened so far in COVID and what will probably likely continue to happen um, is, is those uh, 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 are going to uh, be with us uh, for uh, several years going forward under the best case scenario. Ich habe über Sabina gescherzt, es ist ein 
Bau- und Logistikunternehmen ist. Ihr macht Hafenanlagen, Flugpisten, äh, Straßen, ähm, seit eine Goldmine im Entstehen, aber es gibt noch Silber in eurem Namen. Äh, das Royalty-Geschäft. Ein paar Worte dazu, bitte. Sure, is is uh, one of Sabina's assets, and it used to be one of the primary assets. Was the Hack Hackett uh, uh, Zinc uh, Silver Project, which is about 50 kilometers away from the George property in Nunavut. That was when 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 the potential was uh, understood of Back River, and uh, that certainly it was a better project for a company of our size. Is that was sold to Extrata, and we maintained a royalty on uh, 22 and a half percent of the first 190 million uh, of the silver produced. 22 and a half percent of the silver produced under the first 190 million ounces of silver, which is the resource, and 12 and a half percent thereafter. Um, that royalty was uh, put together when zinc was, you know close to $1.50 and, and silver was around 30. Um, you know, uh, until very recently, you know, um, silver um, had a hard time getting even anywhere close to $20. And, you know, we've seen that, you know, close to $30 print again down a little now. Um, but that project is certainly uh, uh, getting back to the point that it's viable. And, you know, the $64 question is, is what does Glencore do with that asset? I think Glencore has had some financial challenges. Um, Glencore um, and their CEO has, has been very adamant that they will not develop projects. But with that being said, is is there more of a, uh, they're, 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 in my opinion, more of a trading company than a mining company, um, is what they will do is, is at the right time find a buyer uh, and maintain some trading rights on those concentrates. Um, and uh, when that happens, is uh, certainly anybody who's going to develop that project Uh, uh, it's going to have significant impacts, positive impacts for Sabina in terms of our silver royalty. So, um, you know, I think that there's a, a, a strong chance that we'll see some uh, positive uh, uh, news from, from Hackett uh, over the next uh, year or two. Um, and that could have a, a very big uh, impacts to Sabina and Sabina share price. Definitiv Fantasie vorhanden. Um, Stichwort Rechtssicherheit. Ähm, in Kanada auf jeden Fall vorhanden, im Gegensatz zu Ländern wie ähm, Kolumbien, Ecuador oder irgendeinem anderen afrikanischen Land. Äh, das hat aber seinen Preis. Äh, Stichwort CO2-Steuern, ESG. Ihr habt mehr als 350 Treffen veranstaltet mit den Inuit. Ähm, was sind die Kosten ähm, als Größe für Sabina oder für, für jedes andere kanadische Unternehmen? Look, the, the, the The cost benefit is certainly far uh, better. Um, look, to me, ESG is 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 whether uh, it, it, it's a requirement or not. It's something that I think good corporate uh, citizens do. So nobody wants to develop a project without making sure that you can achieve buy-in by by local residents. Um, and you know, to be clear, the closest significant community to us is about 250 kilometers away. But even with that being said, is look, we take their comments seriously. And um, uh, getting ESG buy-in is just a, uh, whether you're in Colombia or Ecuador, um, it's, it's equally as important. Um, you're probably under more scrutiny uh, on ESG than you are in, 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 uh, in uh, non-first world countries. Uh, but I think it's, it's just as important to, if you're in Canada. You know, look, carbon tax, um, I, I do believe that uh, it's certainly unfair for projects like ours that um, have no viable alternatives is, you know, uh, solar. Well, you know, in the Arctic, uh, uh, the sun is uh, below the high horizon uh, on, on the months of the year that it doesn't make sense. Um, uh, you know, uh, wind power, um, it doesn't blow uh, every day uh, uh, enough wind that you can rely upon it. But those are things that certainly um, that we are looking at, you know, are there options that we can put in you know, battery uh, uh, auxiliary backup that uh, will will save some money. Um, it, when we're making excess electricity, you can store it short term. Um, you reduce your overall uh, diesel consumption by 10 to 20 percent. So we're looking at some of those options in order to, to maintain the hit of the curve, but also being, uh, uh, you know, very cognizant that, you know, we're not a, a multinational major and um, initial capital is uh, is still a number that you know we have to do everything we can to make sure that uh, you know we don't spend dollars that we don't need to at this point um look i think we have the ability to build projects cheaper than many of the majors and not not because we're better because we're forced to with our cost of capital is so high 
And so we have to look at everything uh, uh, two or three times and say, look, is it really a want or is it a need? And uh, um, but still making sure that we've put the required capital in that, you know, we don't make some of those mistakes that others have in the north that end up costing, you know, the, the shareholders a significant portion of their value. So, you know, it's a balancing act and, 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 uh, and, and we understand that. Sie sollten sicherlich Greta einladen für einen kleinen Realitätscheck im Winter. Äh, zurück zu den Aktionären. Die können profitieren zum einen von äh, Fusion oder Übernahme oder ähm, der Entwicklung der Mine selbst, die dann äh, letztendlich produziert. Ist es fair anzunehmen, dass sie selbst das bevorzugen würden, äh, dass die Mine letztendlich äh, selbst entwickelt wird, anstatt aufgekauft zu werden? Well, I, I, I wouldn't necessarily prefer that because, um, you know, I, I think there's nothing wrong with a merger and acquisition market where people are paying reasonable valuations, but that's not happening today. So we have to live with the reality. And the reality is, is we can deliver more value by developing this project ourselves in the current environment. And that may change, in which case, I, I don't think we're, we're ever going to uh, not look at other alternatives. But today, our assessment is the best alternative to creating values to develop the project ourselves. Es ist wohl interessant zu erwähnen, dass ihr äh, Chancen habt auf langfristiges Wachstum innerhalb eures eigenen Besitzes. Ihr habt äh, Gus und dann habt ihr George 50 Kilometer weiter entfernt. Ähm, es ist also fair oder richtig anzunehmen, dass ihr die Chance habt auf kontinuierliches Wachstum. Geologically, I think the closest, closest analogy to Back River is the, is the Muscle White Mine, which was originally developed by uh, Placer Dome, uh, acquired by Gold Corp under the merger and now the Newmont Mine. And that was originally a 10-year mine life. And what is it, 15 years later, it's still got a 10-year mine life. You know, these, these deep-seated iron formations tend to go to great depths. You know, the, the one that everybody likes to make the comparison to, and, and I'm not ready to yet, is, uh, is the Homestake uh, lead mine in, in South Dakota. And, you know, that never did run out of gold. What it did was run out of economics at over 8,000 feet of depth. So, again, when... There's very few of these large uh, uh, gold-bearing iron formations. Uh, I think we're the fifth largest in the world, at, uh, uh, and, and, and which is, uh, you know, most of the others that are larger than us were not as large as, as we are today when they first went into production. And, and um, by continued exploration at depth and down plunge, uh, they were able to show additional mine life. So I think that uh, we've only scratched the surface in, in total gold uh, potential at, uh, at Back River. Und eine unangenehme Frage, wie viel Geld verbrennt ihr? Was ist eure Burn Rate? Wie viel gebt ihr aus für Sekretärinnen, äh, Jets und äh, Büros? Und äh, wie viel gebt ihr aus für Exploration und Konstruktion der Mine? Well, Jets is easy. It's zero unless uh, it's a jet providing uh, uh, fuel or, or supplies to camp. Is, uh, uh, we've never flown anything but, uh, but commercial uh, for, for, for this team. Um, and even things like business classes, if you can get an upgrade, fine. But uh, you know, we, we don't even we don't even pay for that. Um, you know, I, if we look at burn rate, is um, you know, on staff we have a full project development team, engineers, uh, geologists, uh, uh, finance, uh, and the rest. And and we're about two and a half million dollars a year for for that team. Everything beyond that is uh, is is uh, is uh, on the project. And um, look, uh, it, it's very easy for us to, uh, uh, at $600 a meter, um, to, to spend significant on drilling costs, sorry, 600 meters per, uh, uh, per, $600 per meter, uh, all in for drilling, um, including assaying and support. Um, you know, it's very easy to spend money on a project like this, but you know, what, our, our, what we've done is been able to show more value for the dollars that we've spent than, than, uh, uh, than we put into the ground. Und eine Frage jenseits von Sabina und jenseits von Gold. Ich habe erfahren, dass es an Ihrem Familientisch äh, heiß herging, und zwar immer nur um Steine und Aktien. Daher die Frage, Bruce McLeod interessiert sich für welchen Junior Mining äh, Wert im Bereich Eisen, Kupfer? Well, look, I think something that I was an early investor in that's done very well of late is Solaris. I think, uh, you know, hopefully that's David Lowell's uh, last discovery, even though, you know, we call it posthumously. Uh, now that he's passed, um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, there's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of good projects that have been undercapitalized in the last market uh, because of the lack of equity. Um, you know, I think that, you know, you just have to look very carefully at, uh, at management teams. There's still, 
that's my number one uh, 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 criteria when I'm looking at potential investment. Um, and two is, is uh, you know, does that management team actually have the ability to make a discovery? Um, you know, it's it, 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 rather than, you know, redrilling something that's been drilled uh, 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 during, you know, two or three previous cycles. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with taking old projects and making them uh, successful. You know, Back River was a good example. Um, many of the majors tried their hand at it, but they could never get the resource over 2 million ounces. Um, and again, putting that right geologic thought and having the right team uh, is a big part of uh, uh, being successful. And I think, you know, the one thing that other people have to ask is there are very few geologists that can make discoveries in multiple trains. You know, David Lowell was one of those. Um, you know, probably uh, discovered more economic pounds of copper and ounces of gold than any individual alive. Um, but, you know, he's, he's the exception, not the rule. So, you know, if you're, if you're looking for somebody that is exploring uh, in, uh, in Nevada for, for uh, a certain deposit type, is make sure they have experience and, and some success in that, or at least key members of their team, um, volcanogenic massive sulfide geologists and, uh, and, and, and moving those to, to, to something in, in, a, in a different terrain. You know, your chances of success certainly uh, go down. So it's investing in management, the team, and that ability. And, and I think right now, uh, look, um, we're, we're in a market in the last couple of months, whatever anybody's touched has certainly gone up. But I think you have to look beyond that and, uh, and take a little more focused uh, approach on, uh, on, on, uh, on, on, on investments. But, you know, the best stock picker in our family is still my 90-year-old mother. She, she actually goes to... Uh, uh, the newsstand to get the Northern Miner rather rely on a subscription because she can get it a day earlier. Uh, she hasn't really figured out that you can get it online even before that. Um, but, you know, she's probably the best uh, penny stock picker of, uh, of anyone in the family. Um, and, uh, da müssen wir auf jeden Fall ein Interview organisieren. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Und uh, bis demnächst. Thank you very much for uh, having the time to have me on your show.